Okay, I've been trying to film this for the past like two hours and I've been procrastinating But here we are. Oh my god. I haven't been here in a while These past few months have been How do I say I was depressed <laughs> so I'm coming out of like a depressive episode So I thought this video would be a great opportunity to do some self-care, but but there's a twist. So I'm also going to be answering some juicy questions. Blah. So I asked y'all to send me some juicy questions. I said, don't hold back. I don't want to make this intro too long. I'm trying hard not to. I just haven't been here in a while and I'm nervous. But I asked y'all to send me some juicy questions and y'all delivered. My eyelashes come off. I tried magnetic eyelashes today and I don't know if I like them or not, but we'll see. I have a hair in my eye. So, oh my god. You ever just reach into your eyeball and pull hairs out? Because I do. So, some of the themes in this video might be a bit mature, but they're things that I hadn't talked about or, you know, brought up before. Because A, the internet was not as accepting when these things happened as it is now. And I've never really been super open with things that happened in my life on the internet. I, I think I've just been, you know, scared. But I am a normal person and sometimes I make bad decisions. I hope that some of these questions that I'm gonna answer will serve as a warning to you and hopefully some of y'all can learn from my mistake. Also, we have a sponsorship. We have a sponsorship that's like super awesome. I actually love this brand and I want to say thank you to them. So thank you Truly Beauty. They have provided me with all of the tools necessary for a proper self-care moment. I said this wasn't going to be a long intro, but it definitely was. So let's get into it. Okay, so first I want to do this sexy soft lip scrub. It's peppermint and peppermint is like my favorite flavor. So I'm going to try it. Also, one of the things that I love about Truly Beauty is their packaging. Dude, I'm gonna do a little YouTuber. Little, <laughs> they're called beauty gurus. <gasps> it's so cute. Can I eat this? It tastes so good. Can I eat it? I wanna eat it. Can I eat it? Can I eat it? Oh, do not ingest. Okay, don't eat it. My lips desperately needed this. They've been so crusty. I wish I could eat it. I might just have a little. Okay, so let's get into the questions. I screenshotted some off Instagram and some off Snapchat. I'm gonna start with some mild questions because we're gonna work our way up to the spicy ones. Also, while we do that, I'm gonna be applying the unicorn body butter. Well, this is what it looks like. It smells like, y'all know what sweet and sassy is? Oh my God, it smells like sweet and sassy. Sweet and sassy is the place I went to when I was a kid, like once for a birthday party, but this is what it smells like. By the way, these products are vegan, clean, high performing, animal cruelty free, real, fresh, made in the USA with global ingredients. Ooh, hello. So, period. Okay, so I got a lot of questions concerning, I'm gonna move back. Okay, so I got a lot of questions about my relationship. If y'all didn't know, oh, this feels good. I'm such a dry ass bitch, this feels so good. So if y'all didn't know, I have a boyfriend. And a lot of people were asking questions like, how did I meet Kyle? How long have we been together? All that good stuff. I met Kyle on Instagram. <laughs> I followed him, I think I was I followed him um, on Instagram because I'd never seen him before and I was like, who is this? He's so mysterious. <laughs> okay, so I also wanted to mention this because I forgot and I actually think it's really funny. So Kyle didn't know who I was at all and the reason why he followed me back was because he's, all my fan pages started following him and he was like, who is this? So I thought that was funny. <laughs> and he swiped up on my story i was watching nightmare before christmas and he likes the movie nightmare before christmas but we were talking about it and then we just became really good friends he's really cool and we just get along and we were friends for a while and we didn't start dating until i want to say june i'm just like rubbing my legs it feels really good so i'm sorry if my like leg rubbing is throwing you off yeah so then we just you know became official we were just having a hard time seeing each other because of COVID and everything. So he ended up moving in and then the rest is history. 
Okay, so the next question is do I still talk to any of my exes? I don't talk to any of my exes anymore. I feel like that'd be disrespectful to my boyfriend, but I wish all of them the best. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a question that comes up a lot. This is this is where things get a little deep for me because as some of y'all know, I was sexually assaulted when I was 13 and that's how I lost my virginity. So for everyone asking virginity questions, uh, there's your answer. I've talked about it. It's just really hard to talk about. I don't like to think about it. I think if the whole sexual assault thing would have never happened, I wouldn't have lost my virginity that early. On a lighter note, someone asked, which tattoo did you get first? <laughs> so my first tattoo is on the back of my neck. It's like two angel wings. I also got a finger tattoo at the same time. They're both for my fans. Um, angel wings and then this one says always I recently got this tattoo it says crybaby because I love Lil Peep more than anything in this world and I also got this one at the same time I think I'm done getting tattoos though I say that now and I'll probably get another one but I think I'm done this question I also get so much someone asked what happened to you and Luna you guys didn't know Luna was my best friend for a couple years Honestly, y'all, I don't even know what happened there, so I can't really provide much insight. She just kind of stopped talking to me, <laughs> so I don't really know, but I wish her the best. She started doing her show, she moved to New York, and that's pretty much it. I don't really know. There was, We never fought or had any, like, major falling out. It just kind of happened. So, yeah, but I miss her, and I hope she's doing well. I still watch her Instagram and, you know, keep up with her. Let me use this. This is... Anti-cellulite resurfacing body serum and it smooths and tighten it. I'm gonna slap that right on my butt because it might be awkward to film. Hold on. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. It smells good. <laughs> Put it on the back of my legs because you know, you know how be. Us ladies. It smells great. All these all this stuff smells like the gates of heaven. So someone asked <laughs> What's your worst relationship? I feel like I I don't regret any relationships. I feel like they all taught me something, but I do wish that some of the relationships I was in hadn't continued for as long as they did. I wasn't happy and I didn't know how to break things off. I have a really hard time being alone. <laughs> I don't know, I just like the security of having another person. I don't really regret any of my relationships, but I definitely had some where like, I just think I shouldn't have stayed as long as I did. Okay, so someone asked, where and at what age did you have your first kiss? The, okay, so I had my first kiss when I was 11. I had a little boyfriend, he lived right behind me. It was snowing and we met up behind like basically my backyard <laughs> and he wouldn't let me go inside he was holding my hands and he wouldn't let me go inside and my hands were freezing because it was snowing and i didn't have gloves and i was like please just let me go inside and get gloves and he was like no and then he kissed me and i ran inside crying and i told my mom my mom was like it's okay so yeah that's how i had my first kiss um he ended up breaking up with me and that's actually how lydia and i became friends because Lydia told me in fifth grade that he was messaging her on kick and I hated her after that. But then I came around and realized that she was trying to help me. Then we became besties and we've been best friends ever since. Someone asked, what is the one moment you felt secondhand embarrassment for someone? This story, yeah. I could give you a full story time on this because I was so shook when this happened. I'm gonna sum it up for you as best as I can. I went to this launch party a while ago and this was right before I started dating Ian. This was actually kind of when Ian and I first met and started talking and Ian introduced me to a man. This man I had watched on YouTube and I thought he was great and I was like oh my god he's so cool and funny and like whatever. I didn't think anything of it. He was looking at me weird but like whatever. He, he you know. I got in the Uber to leave the party. I had this guy added on Snapchat because I was like, you know, a fan. I liked his content. As soon as I get in the car, as soon as my ass hits the seat and I'm in this Uber, I get a notification that this person added me back on Snapchat. And I was like, interesting. <laughs> I'd heard stories about this person. By the way, this person has a whole ass family. And I'd heard a lot of stories, but I never believe anything I see because 
the internet just makes shit up all the time. But <laughs> I got in the car, I was 17 at this point, I think. Yes, I was 17. And I opened my phone, saw that this person had added me back and I was like, whoa, <laughs> red flag. Ding, 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 ding. Like, uh, we just met, Ugh. And I open a message from this person and he had the audacity to ask me how old I was. When I tell you I was shaking, I was in this Uber and I wasn't shaking because I was nervous or anything. I was shaking because I was so angry that this man had a whole ass family and had messaged me, how old are you? My little 17 year old self messaged me, how old are you? So I told Ian and Ian was like, oh my God, no way. Since then, I've, n I've never been able to look at this person the same again. I was like, yo, what? Cause I opened the, like I opened the message and I didn't respond cause I was like, dude, no. That was a moment where I felt secondhand embarrassment and not even, I don't, it's just like, dude. Cause he saw me with, I was with Ian all night. How do you not pick up on these things? Also, you have a family? Like, I don't know, just gross behavior. Everyone who I've told that story to is like, yeah, that makes sense. He does that to a lot of people. And I see stories come out all the time and I'm like, yeah, I believe it. <laughs> like now I believe it. So someone asked me if I've ever tried weed. <laughs> I want this to be a cautionary tale about trusting the right people. I feel like a lot of mistakes that I've made in the past have just been because I trusted the wrong people. I'm not condoning this at all. I was with my friend and she introduced me to a boy that she was friends with that I'd never met before. We live in Los Angeles and I just moved to Los Angeles. I think I was like 14 or 15. I just moved here. I was fresh out of Philadelphia where weed is not legal whatsoever, or at least it wasn't at the time. Now it's like, you can use it in like medical, whatever. Anyway, so I'm in Los Angeles. I'm vibing and I just met these people. So the peer pressure is like through the roof. They could tell me to jump off a bridge right now and I'd be like, uh, okay. I'm a very easily influenced person and I'm well aware of it. I do impulsive things all the time because someone else told me to. It's just a bad characteristic of mine. One of the boys pulls out a joint and I'm looking at it and I'm like, nah, cause I have really sensitive lungs and a really sensitive, like, I just, yeah. And I knew nothing about weed, like zero. He pulls out a joint and my friend takes it. She takes a hit of it. She passes it to me. Everybody's looking at me. There's like three boys that I just met and one of them is pretty cute. So I'm like, okay, being 14 and naive and stupid. I take it, I take a hit of it. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. I'm sure I've told my mom this by now. I've told her this story, but I do not smoke weed anymore. And this story is a big reason as to why I don't. So I take a hit of it. Everything's fine, right? All of a sudden, this dude is sitting in front of me. Like this, this is him and this is me. And I'm shouting at him, like in his face, because to me, he looks way further away than he actually is. And then every now and then I would realize how close he actually was and I'd stop yelling because I'm like, dude, why am I yelling at him? It almost felt like he was going like this and I couldn't figure out how far away he actually was. Anyway, I sat on the curb outside of this person's house for like an hour trying to order an Uber because my perception was so off. My letters and numbers on my keyboard were getting jumbled. My eyes were like blurry. I couldn't figure out what I was looking at. It was bad. And I actually didn't realize what was happening because I thought I never smoked weed. So I was like, I don't know what this is supposed to be like. Looking back, that is, n these are not normal occurrences. I get in the car, my friends are freaking out. We're like, yo, what is happening? my one friend is like tripping and we start talking about Sarah Baska because <laughs> Sarah Baska posted a video about why she doesn't smoke weed anymore. And we're like, dude, why did we do this? Sarah literally told us it was a bad idea. I just saw this in a Sarah Baska video. Mind we, we are in the Uber. Like we are on our way to my apartment. I'm tripping. Also so unsafe for us to get in an Uber and tr be tripping like this. I should have just called my mom and had her pick me up, but I was not about to tell my mom what I was up to. So I was freaking out guys if you're ever in an unsafe situation just tell your parents you might be in trouble but that is so much better than being in an unsafe situation where people can take advantage of you it's just so bad don't do that back to the story so i pull up i pull up to my apartment and who is standing outside it's fucking sarabasca 
worst time for this to happen. Worst time for me to just be talking about her and then I pull up to my apartment, she's standing outside. Cause she lived in the building and I had no idea. Now I'm thinking, baby, that's a hallucination. Like sh there's no way that she's real. Like there's no way that I was just talking about her and now she's right in front of me. I've never met Sarah before. She's a lovely girl by the way, but I had never met her before at this point. Me and my friends run up to her. Imagine Sarah seeing like two 14 year old girls running up to her going, Sarah was super nice. She was like, go inside, drink some water. But in my head, she's not real. This is like my spirit guide telling me what to do in this moment. I'm freaking out. Like, Sarah, please, I don't know what to do. Like, I watched your video. You're right. I should never smoke weed. Freaking out. It took me like 30 minutes to find my apartment because I was looking at the numbers on the wall and they were getting all jumbled up. And then I get into my apartment and now I can't even have a conversation because I'll say something and then I'll immediately forget what I just said. We all made it home safe. The walls are moving. I'm seeing shit. Every time I close my eyes, I saw like rainbows with like a rainbow in the middle and like a hippo and a little red car, like a cartoon driving on this rainbow. Like I could not sleep. It was the worst experience ever. Come to find out that the weed was laced with something. I don't know what it was. It was bad. After that, I was like, dude, no, I'm not smoking weed. I just don't like it. So in a very long winded way, I just told you, Yes, I have smoked weed before. No, I don't like it. The moral of that story was to tell you, make sure that if you're getting yourself into a situation like that, you know the people or you know what you're doing because I had no idea and I got screwed over. So make sure that you trust the people around you. And even if you do like, Take precautions, be careful, be safe, because shit happens. Oh my God, I just remembered I have economics homework and it's due in like a couple hours. Ooh. By the way, I'm in college. That's an update. I need to do like a full update video. I also wanna do more story times because I have a really good time telling y'all stories and I go through a lot of crazy shit. So I would love to tell y'all more stories. I'll see how this one goes over because I spilled a lot of like tea on myself in this video. I'm sure I can find a lot more crazy stories where that came from. Anyway, like I was saying, I'm in college now. I'm a freshman and I actually really enjoy it. I should go do my economics homework anyway. So I think I'm gonna wrap that video up here. If you guys wanna see another one of these kinds of videos, let me know. I had a really good time filming it. And thank you to Truly Beauty for sponsoring this video. I love y'all and their products are amazing. Honestly, my legs feel so hydrated, like still. Usually my body sucks up any sort of moisturizer, like. But this is actually like keeping me hydrated. It's pretty nice. I don't know when this video is gonna be posted, but if it's after this Friday, then I have a new song out. It's called Nobody to Love. It's a telecast. It's awesome. And they are my very, very, very good friends. Y'all should check it out. I don't know. I'll keep y'all updated. I'll see you on the flip side. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I hope you still think I'm cool after this video. I don't know. Ah! Um. Anyway, I just want to start being more open and honest with you guys because I feel like we've grown up together and I just, I don't know. I feel like y'all could learn from some of my mistakes. Thank you guys for watching this video. I love you so much and I will talk to you soon. Bye!